Hi everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Please do me a huge favor and press the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're not yet subscribed, and share this video with others. I appreciate all the comments and I appreciate all the dialogue. Today's video, we are going to be talking about the background investigation process, in particular, reference checks. If you are going through a law enforcement background investigation on the federal level or even on the state level, if you are applying to become a correctional officer or even as a security officer where an extensive security clearance must be conducted, this video is especially helpful for you. You're going to learn a lot. So one of the a fundamental component is the reference check. Your background investigator wants to assess your stance in the community. What is the community's perspective on you? Because most likely you are going to be in a position of public trust. Why not ask the community what they think of you? So what they end up doing, what background investigators end up doing is they go through your reference list. You're supposed to list anywhere between three and 10 references. It just depends on the agency that you're applying at. Sometimes you'll be able to list coworkers, other times not, but more so what they want are references that are not your current coworkers. Sometimes they'll accept, well, many times they'll accept former co coworkers, especially if they end up becoming your friend later on. So this is what I want you to do. List people on the reference checks that will respond to an email that will respond to a request to fill out a form. So the form that needs to be filled out, obviously depending on where you apply it, <clears throat> it's anywhere between one and three pages long. If you have somebody that's not literate or that's somebody that cannot find somebody to scribe for them, don't ask them. Don't ask them at all. This is, is, a, is, a, is a form of about 12 questions, sometimes 14, sometimes 20 questions. And that person who you, who you list has to take time out of their day to fill out one of these reference forms. As a matter of fact, there is a subscriber on this channel who I became friends with since I worked with him back in the day's private security. Um, at one o'clock p.m. yesterday, I got a request to fill out the reference check form. This is through one of his background investigators. He wants to be a security officer for this law enforcement agency. And at 10 o'clock, well, actually at 10 o'clock p.m., I, I started working on it a little bit. And then by 1.50 p.m., I already submitted the form. Sometimes you'll be able to scan the form. Sometimes you have to mail the form. It just depends on, on the agency. I end up spending about 20 minutes just because I really want this guy to get hired. Um, I will not fill out these reference check forms for people that I don't know, for people who I've never seen in my life. I have to know you in person and we have to have a, a good relationship. That's, that's the only time I'll fill out those reference forms. I usually do it for, for my past students of mine when I taught at the private college. Um, I knew these students for about a solid two years because that's how long the associate's degree program was, was two years. So I, I fill out anywhere between 10 to 20 of, of these forms. I have the actual form in front of me. I'm not gonna show you on camera because this is private information. What I will do is in the description box below, I'll leave a link to the questionnaire that I'm referencing. And I made sure that this form is public information. If you guys don't know already, I am a police background investigator. However, the information that I'm providing, it's not secret information. You, anybody can pull this off the internet. Like I said, I will leave a link in the description box below so that you can see this reference form. And what I want you to do is ask your reference, can I list you as reference? And if I could list you, would you be able to take about 15 to 20 minutes out of your day to fill out this form? There's about 15, 12, or 20 questions, but I really need this job. If you could just do me a huge favor, could you fill it out when you get it? And if they say yes, then I would ask them, when would you, once you get it, when would you be able to fill the form out? Because I'll tell you, one of the top three or top four holdups for a background investigation is the references will not turn this form, off, form in. They get lazy, they, they get complacent, they get busy, and they forget about it, guys. And then you have to constantly bother the references. It, it happened to me. And that's why when I get one of these reference forms, the form is sent to the background investigator anywhere between one and three days. Because I know what exactly it's like for somebody to take their time on this form. So you absolutely cannot list anybody on here 
who's not going to turn in this form, who's not going to take 15 to 20 minutes out of the, out of the day. And what you want to list as your references are usually law enforcement officers, correctional officers, people of public trust. So maybe there's somebody that's in the city council, um, a city manager, your public employees, generally because most of them, they, they take an oath of office, you want them to fill this form out. You want them to be the references. Now, if you're in college, you may not have a lot of references, but however, you are in an associate's degree program, a bachelor's degree program, or even a master's degree program, that's either two years, four years, or five years, that you might have constant interaction with these professors or these instructors. What I want you to do after, well, during class is become that teacher's pet, you guys. I hate to say this, but you got to become a teacher's pet. The more likely you are as a teacher's pet, the more likely that one of your professors is going to fill out one of these reference forms. Okay. Every student who has asked me, who I taught, I, I fill it out. Okay. Um, usually, and they, for me, they don't have to be a teacher's pet. However, I remember teacher's pets the most because they were always, they were always there after class on the breaks. So be that teacher's pet. I'm not saying every single day, but every once in a while, be that teacher's pet. Be that person whom they remember for all times. I know I taught a lot of people at, at private college and community college. If they ask me to do a reference check, if I don't remember them, I, I can't fill it out, you guys, because my name at the end of the day is on this, on this reference form. Be the teacher's pet. Now, after you're done with that course, with that instructor, Every once in a while, <clears throat> send them an email. Call them. Ask them, how are you doing today, sir or ma'am? Um, the next year passes. Go by their office and ask how they've been. And just talk to them. Ask them questions. Just form a professional bond with them. If you do that, chances are they're going to fill this, this reference form out. And instructors are also good people. Professors, um, these are also people usually of public trust. And you want them to fill it out because they'll be as complete as possible. Something I want you to do is go over the form with, with the person who's going to provide a reference. So for example, on number five, it says, how does a candidate deal with difficult problems or emergencies? And you're gonna have to explain if you're the reference. Remind the reference of a particular event, if they can't remember anything. Remind them of a particular event when you had an emergency or you had a difficult problem and how did you resolve that? Because you want that issue to be reflected on, on this form. Now, if you're a younger person, some of the emergencies you might have is maybe you got broken down on the highway, on the street, um, and your friend came to your, your aid or your friend knew about, about what happened or your reference knew about what happened. They have direct knowledge on how you dealt with, dealt with that issue. Ask the reference to try to be as thorough as possible. The more thorough you are, the better it looks to the background investigator. For number seven, it says, does a candidate presently engage in illegal drugs? As somebody going through the background investigation process, guys, don't use your tweaker friends as reference. You never know what they're going to say here. Okay, don't, please don't do that. Uh, number eight, has a candidate expressed or displayed any bias or prejudice towards others? Again, choose your reference wisely. And number eight actually does not need an explanation. Uh, number four, we're, going, we're actually going back to number four. It says, do you consider the candidate to be an honest person? And then you're going to have to explain like, why is this candidate an honest person. So this particular candidate, I worked with him at the hospital. He was entrusted with, with money and other objects of value uh, when he's transferring, transferring it from a patient to the lost and found or the safe room. Um, and, I, and I've seen them with these items in transit. So I can, I can actually give specific examples if I needed to, but that's what they're looking for, guys. And if your reference forgets about these events, you can always remind them, okay? Now, if the background investigation or the background investigator says that you can't contact your references. I had never seen that happen, but obviously then you can't. That, that's not wise. And back to number two, it says, how long have you known the candidate for? This is one of the reasons 
why you have to check in with your references every year or every couple of months because I'd forget you. And some of these background investigation reference check forms, they ask when is the last date of contact with the applicant, okay? Is the last time that you had contact with the applicant, was it 20 years ago? Was it 10 years ago? That's very important because somebody who had recent contact with you is going to be more reliable than somebody that had contact with you 20 years ago. Okay, let's talk about number nine. How would you trust this candidate with your own personal safety? Or I'm sorry, would you trust this candidate with your own personal safety or that of your family? And I would ask your reference, would you be able to give me a specific example? How is it that the community can trust me? How is it, how is, how is it that, that other people can trust you with their personal safety or that of your family? You can always give a specific example for that. Maybe you babysit their kids. You watch over the house. Those are good examples to provide. So in conclusion, make sure that you contact your references. Make sure that you contact your references on a weekly monthly or yearly basis, make sure you check in with them. Make sure you list a reference who is going to fill this form out as soon as possible and make sure that you get an ETA on when they are most likely going to turn this form in. Get some type of commitment with them. So that's all I have guys. If you guys have any input, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. If you like these types of background investigation videos because you're applying at a law enforcement agency or you're applying at a security company, Make sure that you guys check out the description. I'm, also, I'm always posting different videos on this subject right in the description box. Take care, guys, and good luck applying.